Hey, what's up, math scholars? It's Wednesday. I'm kind of sick, so I hope I don't cough too much in the video. Everybody's really tired today, but, um, yeah, hopefully... If, since it is Wednesday, that means there's only one more day of school. So oh, who's excited oh, about that? Oh, yeah. Woo! I am so pumped for a four-day weekend, even though I have work on Friday. Hmm. All right, terms to know. Polynomial. Polynomial just means many nomials, so um, basically more than one monomial. Um, I'll just write many terms. You can have a monomial, which is one term. You can have a binomial, which is two terms. You can have three terms, which is a trinomial. We've already talked about all those words. But then polynomial just means you have many terms. So a trinomial is a polynomial, and a binomial is a polynomial. <laughs> Actually, your book says a monomial is a polynomial as well. All right. A polynomial function would be a function that basically there's a couple rules. So the first rule is that all exponents must be whole numbers. All exponents are whole numbers. That's rule number one. And then rule number two is all coefficients are real numbers. Now, do you guys know what coefficients are? What's a coefficient? Here you go. All coefficients are real numbers. So I'll give you an example of a yes, it's a polynomial function, and I'll give you an example of a no, it is not a polynomial function. This would be a yes. 5x to the third minus 6x to the seventh plus 8.2. All of our exponents are nice whole numbers, which whole numbers, by the way, cannot have any um, <coughs> decimals. And actually, whole numbers can't even have negatives. Whole numbers are the numbers that start with zero and go up. And then coefficients, Amelia stated, are the numbers in front of the variable. So just make sure all these coefficients are real numbers. 5 is real, negative 6 is real, uh, 8.2 is real. Actually, 8.2 is technically called the constant term, but it is also a real number. So that one would definitely be a polynomial function. <coughs> Let me show you something that would not be a polynomial function. No. So I'll actually break both rules, just to make a point. So I'll make an exponent that is not a whole number. Well, 6x to the 2.5. So that exponent is not a whole number. And then I'll show you a coefficient that would not be a real number. Um, minus negative square root of 4x squared. That there is an imaginary number. So it's an imaginary coefficient. We need to have a real coefficient. And so that would definitely not be a polynomial function. Okay, so the leading coefficient is just the coefficient out front when it's written in standard form. So coefficient out front when it's in standard form. Now you might be curious, what is standard form? Standard form is when they take the highest exponent and they work their way down to the lowest exponent. Standard form is the letters. So uh, something that is in standard form would be 6x squared minus 8x plus 1, because it has the highest exponent first, that's 2, and then um, exponent of 1, and then an exponent of 0. That is standard form. If it's not in standard form, you want to put it in standard form before identifying the leading coefficient. And by the way, the 6 is our leading coefficient. Right, degree is the highest exponent in the polynomial. Uh, this particular one is a degree two polynomial. The highest exponent is that two.
And then the constant term is the term with no variable. In that case, one is called the constant term. Term with no variable. In that case, <coughs> one. I'm just drawing the arrows for one. One is the constant term <coughs> with six, is the leading coefficient, and is degree two. So not hard, but probably pretty new to have. Okay, so these are special words that go along with our polynomials. If we would have a degree two polynomial, like we saw on the last slide, we could call that polynomial a quadratic. And that's what we've been studying all year, quadratic. That's why we've used the quadratic formula. We've graphed quadratics. I think chapter one was called the quadratic chapter. Um, but later in the year, we'll get into some other things. Degree threes are called cubics. You do want to write this chart down. These are words you'll need to know. Degree fours are called cortex. Degree ones are called linear. Uh, degree zeros are called constants. And then they have examples of each. So a degree zero would have no variable whatsoever. A degree one, that would just look like a straight line. They would have slopes and intercepts. So what we've studied so far, quadratic. We've never seen cubic, but that'll be coming soon. And then quartic is degree four. Anything bigger than that, like degree five, degree six, degree seven, they don't have special words to describe them. You would just say fifth degree, sixth degree, seventh degree. Um, so we're just going to say yes or no, whether it's polynomial. If so, write it in standard form and state the degree, type, and leading coefficient. So first things first, I'm going to see if part A here follows the rules. Are all exponents whole numbers? 4 and 2. Yes. Okay. Are all coefficients real numbers? There's a 1 there, there's a negative 1 fourth, there's a 3. So yes, this is definitely going to be a polynomial. Now I've got good news. It's already in standard form. How do I know? They have the biggest exponent happening first, the second biggest happening next, and then this one doesn't have an exponent or a variable. So the degree is the highest exponent I'm seeing. So this would be a degree 4. Since it's a degree 4, we would call it a quartic. That's its type. And then the leading coefficient is the number out front. It's actually an invisible guy. The 1. So the leading coefficient is 1. Did you understand how to answer this question? Let's try the next one. Now part B. Are all exponents whole numbers? <laughs> Technically, yes. There's an exponent of a 2 right here, and there's an invisible exponent of a 1 right here, so that rule is okay. Are all coefficients real numbers? So I guess the debate is, is pi a real number? Pi is a real number. Something that would be not real is something with an imaginary pi to it. Yeah, like an i. Yes, this one is okay. This one is small. Now, it's not in standard form right now because our highest exponent is actually living last. So this term should be written first. It's going to be pi x squared plus 7x minus radical That's what it looks like in standard form. So what's the degree? <coughs> it's the highest exponent that you're seeing. The degree is 2. Degree 2. And that would make it a quadratic. That's the type. Set that up your chart. And the leading coefficient is the coefficient out front of the whole entire thing. So the leading coefficient is pi. Now pi is weird. It's an irrational number, but it is a real, a real number. We'll just look at C real quick since it's right here. C is going to be a no. Do you know why? What breaks the rule? It's this guy. Negative 1 is not a whole number. Whole numbers are the number 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Okay. I think it's time to move on to direct and synthetic substitution. We'll see how far we get. So direct substitution, so you see we only have to actually do one of it. It says let's evaluate this function for when x equals 3. We literally are just going to take that 3 and substitute it in everywhere we see an x. It's that easy. So we're technically finding f of 3. I know you've had algebra and geometry teachers write like that. But you'll just take a 3 and you'll put it in everywhere you see an x. Will you need parentheses around the 3? No. If it's a positive number, you don't. Now, if it's a negative number, I would put the parentheses to say you have all those exponents. But positive, you don't need it. Well, I'll just 
I can even use my little red calculator. It will work. 2 times 3 to the 4th minus 5 times 3 to the 3rd minus 4 times 3 plus 8. What did you guys get? My calculator is 23. Okay. 23. Thank you. Are everybody okay on that? Directly so um, they put it in scientific notation mode, so I got 2.3 times 10 to the first. So I guess I could have moved my decimal place over once. It'll be messed up the mode. I'm just going to reset it. <clears throat> Alright, now let's try a um, uh, glance into some, some synthetic substitution. That was direct, direct is easy. Synthetic. Okay, so synthetic substitution is this totally like new wave math that will remind you of like the lattice method almost. It's just that different. It actually involves fewer operations than um, direct substitution. So all you have to do is you have to take the number that you want to substitute in for x everywhere, and you take that number and you put it in this little backwards L-shaped box. I love this. It's my favorite thing. I wish we had more time for it today. So fun. What you're going to do next is take every coefficient you see and string them across here. So 2 goes first, negative 5 goes next. Uh, next I'm actually going to put a 0, allow me to explain. 2 is the coefficient of the x to the 4th term. Negative 5 is the coefficient of the x to the 3rd term. There is no x to the 2nd term, there's no quadratic term, so that's why you have a 0 as a placeholder. Then you're going to put the negative 4 and the negative 4. It's really cool. I love it. It's one of my favorite things we do in the whole year. So you're going to make this a plus sign and you're going to draw a line straight across the whole thing. To start off, you draw an arrow down because you just have to drop the two down. At this point, you do two multiplied by three. And that gives you six. And that goes in your next column. Now you're going to add straight down. Negative 5 plus 6 is 1. You can keep repeating that mixture of multiplication, adding until you're out of columns. So 1 multiplied by 3 equals 3. Add straight down. 3 times 3 equals 9. Put it one column to the right. Add straight down. And then 5 times 3 is 15. Bit, one column to the right, and add straight down. Now we're out of columns. Guess what we just found? I kind of put a double bar line there to denote that this is my solution to the whole entire math problem. Isn't that cool? <laughs> so we got 23 wow. without the usage of a package, without ever having to take any number to the fourth power or to the third power or the second power of the calculator. Like <laughs> you can, so that's called direct substitution. <laughs> This is teaching you a new method called sub synthetic mm -hmm. substitution. You can check. You can check your work by doing direct. Yeah. <laughs> All righty. So you can definitely do direct substitution to check, but the synthetic substitution is the whole point of today, learning that process. So we have time for one last problem before the bell ends early today for connection schedule. That 2 is going to go in our little tiny box there, because that's the number we're trying to substitute in. Now let's talk about our coefficient. 3 is the coefficient of the x to the 4th term. Negative 6 is the coefficient of the x to the 3rd term. 5 is the coefficient of the x squared term. Oh, good job. Logan thought of it. There is no x to the 1st term. We do need a 0. Not all of them need a 0, but this one sure does, and the last one did. All right, who's ready for some fun? I love this. The biggest mistake I see is people just forgetting to drop the 3. If you forget to drop your 3, your answer will be wrong at the end. So drop that 3, draw an arrow to remind yourself to drop the 3. What is 3 times 2? Oh, those are going to add up to 0. What is 0 times 2? Those are going to add up to 5. What is 5 times 2? Those two are going to add up to 10. And what's 10 times 2? Now right here I put my double bar line just to kind of denote that this here is my answer. So 10. 
So if you want to check, you can stick a two in directly and substitute the text, but should we get to ten? That's our moral answer. What do you think? Do you love it? No. It's really, really cool, I promise. So, hey, thanks for watching the video at home, everybody. There is a lesson master I'm passing out in class, so if you're gone, you can just get to me when you return. Okay. Bye-bye.